So here we are in a, in a very female place in Milano. It's Galleria Luisa delle Piane. And probably it's so female because of, of the honor of this place, which is Luisa delle Piane. She's a, a fabulous lady of, uh, of the Milan Bourgeoisie. She's so adorable. And of course, we are, it's so female because of Matali. I mean, it's not her first show here. She's been showing many times here. And I would say that uh, Matali and Luisa always wonder us. Um, Matali interests me very much. I mean, first of all, she's one of the few uh, women in the design world. I mean, she, Hella Jungerius, The Front. I mean, now some of them are coming out. Pike Bergans, Kiki Van Eyck. Few of them are coming out. But, but really, it's, uh, it's not so common in a way, you know? Anyway, I would say, Matari is very interesting to me because since she came out with, uh, with Edra, she started many years ago. I mean, Massimo Morozzi took her in the design field with, with that project, actually. You know, she arrived in a very punk rock way to, to the design fair and taking it the, the, the bag from the supermarket, basically, filled with, uh, with polyurethane. And was her way of uh, solving the software problem. So she has always had this approach of completely establishing the system in a way. And it's quite kind of weird because she comes from five years of experience in the, in the studio of the king himself, of Philip Stark. I mean, she has been uh, five years there. Actually, I would like to start really from the very beginning. I would like to ask you which kind of relationship you had with Philip and which kind of training you had there. Mm -hmm. well, it was a fairy tale for me to be a designer, but also to, to work. I, I worked with Philip Stark for Thomson, to, so to deal with uh, techno technology. And uh, I was uh, belonging to the starting, but I was also in a big company. So it was uh, marvelous to understand uh, the whole process of design with a big company. And uh, Stark was a little bit different uh, because uh, uh, I was not uh, always in the, in the agency. I was in, in the company also. So I had the possibility to, this, to discuss with him a lot, you know, much more than uh, when I was in, in uh, the agency because uh, he was away from a lot of solicitation, you know. He, uh, so it was uh, for me, and I discovered it after when I came back to, in, in, in the agency of Philip that it was a, a kind of privileged relationship uh, during this time. It was uh, also unusual in France to have such a cultural revolution for such a big company, you know, so it was a marvelous, yeah, marvelous time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Matari, of course, I mean, with a personality like yours, it was impossible to be squashed down. I mean, you, no, Christophe Pillet, I mean, yeah. you survived, of course, because you have a strong personality. I mean, look at yourself. I mean, it's, it's always very interesting as well that Matali with her haircut, with her way of dressing, she became a comic almost herself, you know, because you all you actually have uh, like the, the logo with your face, with the you almost I didn't design this logo, huh? Yeah. Somebody we, did, did it. You yeah. turned yourself into and a cartoon. Everybody loved it, so you turned yourself into a cartoon. Was it because of your children or it's just because you always have kind of a, a playground area where you like to play? No, the idea first was to find a kind of communication system, you know, so uh, at the beginning we, we changed with uh, Philip Stark only with fax and I think it was too, too strict, you know, so I did this small logo, somebody did this small logo and I was changing the, the logo every day to explain my mood or, you know, uh, so to give some, uh, like an some feedback or so. Like, so, like the emoticon. Yeah, so <laughs> a Matali emoticon. That, that, that's <laughs> interesting. That's, that's probably a good project. Here yeah, we have a very interesting project which is very, very, very unusual. I mean, here you were explaining before, Matali, that it's basically one piece of, one sheet of metal. Yeah. And you show how to fold it in many ways. Four different ways, yeah. And the purpose is to come back to the, to the essential and uh, to see that uh, in, inside a very simple project like that, um, you, you see really that the object has a daily use, but it has also a big symbolic aspect. And uh, so the idea is to play with these uh, two layers in the, in the project. Two layers, different materials. I mean, looking at this chair, it always comes to mind that you like to combine very much different materials, even in an, in an unexpected way. I mean, look at the, the wooden path from the metal path, they are completely like, you know, put together. It's an addition, so it's a prolongation of an existing uh, piece I made for uh, 
moustache, it's called instant sit, so it, because you can fold it, as you can see here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, the idea was to say that you, you, you could use the same uh, idea for different scales. So, here it's for more for this furniture, but it could be also for uh, a smaller architecture, for example. Matarina, to which kind of music do you listen to? I mean, you are punk rock or you are like fairy tale, which kind of music no, do you listen to? Electro music. Electro. I, I, like, I like this a lot to work. It's given me a lot of energy and also make me think in a faster way. And the palette of colors in your mind are always so so bright. Yeah, I like colors because for me, like colors are is life. So I don't understand why we are afraid of color. So I think I really use a color as everybody should use a color. I don't think I am, I am uh, uh, using too much color. I just uh, use a color because it's, uh, it's for me much more um, um, uh, intuitive for the people to, to understand color than even understand uh, the aesthetic of an object, for example. So it's, uh, there is no filter. When you look at a color, there is an, uh, you understand it uh, without any interpretation. In a way, so it's a direct uh, communication with the people, you know. You think it's, um, I mean, of course it is, but uh, how much you think that your being a woman has uh, influenced your work? And how, I think, how, how is it possible, you think, that there are so many, there are so few uh, women designers? I think in my case, yeah, there's a more than being a woman, I came from a small village, so already it's, uh, I came from another culture, so it's helped me to have an outside look on, on a context, on a project. So the idea was not to do an, an evolution, but to do something apart. So that's why I start to build my own approach, and uh, I like a small ET in, in this design world in a way. And uh, it took some time because I'm doing uh, uh, a lot of di diverse uh, works to find uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, my personal approach. But now with this approach I can really uh, take a piece and uh, apply it on very different contexts. Here in the Luisa de la Piana gallery I'm, I'm feeling very free to, to try different things because we, we work for a long time together. So, this uh, project, I just, you know, uh, I, I changed with Luisa, explaining I want to come back to the essential. And, uh, yeah, so I feel very free to do something very specific. It's a little bit different from what I'm doing normally, but uh, I like also to use the gallery as uh, an experiment and, uh, 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 to, to, to do different process, to, uh, to make a kind of uh, disposal and then to go on with this. Uh, and perhaps it will... Uh, here it's a small series, but then at the end it could finish uh, and it'd be something more... Did you design this by yourself? No, it's uh, a French company, Misericordia. They are half in Peru, and uh, it's, so it's a fair trade uh, company. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Very nice. So we share a lot with uh, Aurélien. Uh, Matali, you have your dream project. I don't want to have dream projects. I'm working with the dream of my partners, you know. I'm doing right now a hotel in the desert. So it's not my dream. Hotel it's in? In the desert, in Tunisia. In the desert, really? Yeah. So it, it's not my dream. I think people who open my door, the door of my studio. They're welcome. Yeah, I have, I have much more dreams and much more than me, so... Uh, you know, I saw a French movie uh, not so long ago. It, uh, did you see it? It was called Welcome. Mm -hmm. It was talking yeah, about the Calais sure. situation. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Which kind of um, effect had on, uh, on a French citizen? I mean, because it was a very hard movie about the, the French political situation. Yeah, in France it's, uh, it's, it's difficult right now because the creation is something very fragile and uh, you have to, to be careful about uh, how the creation is treated right now. What I, what I mean is, uh, um, I, I like uh, the, the cinema in France is very, it has a connection with the society. Much, uh, there is a lot of connection and, and uh, that's why also I'm living in the east of Paris because you, have, or you choose to live in the museum part or you choose to live in the, the part of the Paris where you, when, you, when you go out in the, in the morning you say, oh, there is a lot to be made, you know. It's, so it's, for me it's very important to feel that uh, the society is evolving and also that we can add something, we can uh, play a role in this society today.
So the welcome written on your door is a real welcome. It's yeah. not like the French movie. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Congratulations, Natalie. You're very, very, very nice. Thank you. Bella. <laughs> Fatto. <laughs> bella, bella. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie davvero.